discussion and possible action on resolution 2011-02 regarding the following request by the same applicant for 16 individual conditional use permits. Mr. Stapley. As a brief overview, the, each of these 16 conditional use permits involve a distributed antenna system, which is a, a wireless antenna that will be disguised within a foam cactus. 20, no, maximum 24 feet tall from the tip of the cactus to natural grade. It also involves a disconnect for electric, but it's an electrical disconnect, and a backup battery disguised within a faux rock, as well as a fiber connection below the ground. These 16 <coughs> nodes will be connected to a larger network that will route to a central hub within the Pima Norte complex, which was approved in a conditional use permit almost a year ago. A DAS node is not a typical macro cell phone tower, which are higher power, between 60 and 150 feet tall, and for the most part involve a large equipment area at the base. <coughs> this location map shows that the proposed CUPs for the DAS nodes are located between Stagecoach Pass on the south, the north, and the town of Tumacopri Way. <coughs> Way. So the DAS nodes. They provided this map, which doesn't show the actual coverage, but is a minimum quarter mile radius surrounding each proposed node. The actual coverage varies based on the topography and surrounding conditions. So in reality, some of these circles may be twice as, have a radius that's twice as, as large. According to the 1996 Federal <coughs> Communications Act, which is governed by the Federal Communications Commission, there are safety standards established to govern radio frequencies. And Crumb Castle's applications here do not exceed those requirements. In fact, they are 50 times lower than the minimum requirements. Limited in, from prohibiting a DAS node, if the provider, in this case Crumb Castle, demonstrates they have a lack of coverage and or capacity. And the packet before you indicates that that is the case. In addition, you can't discriminate between one wireless carrier and another. Typically, one neighborhood meeting is required in addition to notification of property owners within 500 feet. The Crown Castle has exceeded this. Summarize the most commonly received comments that they're shown here on this on this slide. Um, I don't feel to read all of them, but the, the most common one was to they were excited about the improvement, possible improvement in wireless capabilities, and the extent to which Crown Castle answered their questions. Mr. Stabley has shown you the most important thing that we found to clarify for residents is that DAS nodes are not macro large cell towers intrusive with exposed antennas. That's the difference. We're not that, but unfortunately that's what most people picture. So going through the process, making that distinction has been important. They're smaller, they're lower, they use less power, they have concealed antennas. You don't see the antennas themselves. And they were designed specifically to be compatible and used in residential neighborhoods because the larger towers have not been appropriate in those locations. They're connected by fiber optic cable to a hub that is in your community. And right-of-way uh, equipment has been eliminated in the right-of-way. Importantly for your community aesthetics, and this has had some discussion, there. They are able to take multiple carriers. It is in Crown Castle's interest and the carrier's interest to locate on existing DAS nodes. It's quicker. They don't have to go through two years to get approval in other communities. So we anticipate, and we have already in discussions with other carriers on locations on, on the, the system here and the other communities that we've been, that we've been in. They enhance all levels of wireless service, voice quality, uh, signal strength, uh, lack of dropped calls, but most importantly, and you're hearing that a lot tonight, data transmission, audio, video, <coughs> documents. I can pull up my boarding pass on my phone, and I can't do that if there's not enough capacity in the wireless network, and that's why the carriers, and particularly AT&T, are improving their system, and specifically for indoor use. That's uh, an important part of the coverage they want to be able to offer. Crown Castle is one of the largest owners and operators of wireless, shared wireless 
infrastructure in the United States, including DAS. They have over 22,000 sites, which include conventional cell towers, <coughs> rooftop DAS. They're publicly traded with an enterprise value of $20 billion. They acquired new path networks last fall to strengthen their DAS potential in their network. So you've got the same team, but you've got an even stronger company that backs up all the assurances that you insisted upon in the agreement you just approved. The principal question we hear when we go into a community is, why is this DAS network being installed? How does it benefit the community? You've had some discussion on that. There's been an explosion in not just the, the wireless devices, the iPhones, the iPods, the e-readers, and all their apps that, that use this wireless network that has been created. It's like, and I know Mr. Neese has used this uh, analogy, and it's a perfect one. What happens with the freeway, when it first opens, we can all kind of use it, except in Phoenix where we built them so late. They were clogged immediately. What has happened with the wireless network is the lanes are clogged. There's simply not enough capacity to do all of the things we are demanding from our wireless devices. And that's particularly true in sensitive areas like Carefree, Paradise Valley, and Scottsdale, where the larger cell towers were not accepted, and so the service was compromised to begin with. Uh, AT&T uh, looked at their customer base, and their analysis was that the Carefree, Paradise Valley, North Scottsdale area was their number one target in the United States to improve. Why? Because you're affluent, you're well-educated, you're professionals, and you're their biggest users of these devices. Even though we've heard, well, we're older, we don't use them. That simply hasn't been true according to AT&T's analysis. I'm older, I use them. Um, so it benefits the community, as you've heard, as some of you have already said, to have this state-of-the-art wireless technology, the highest quality, the highest level of wireless service. Um, it, and it's providing services not just that we have now, but that are coming in the future. And this system is compatible with the new technologies that will come. Um, Boulders, DC Ranch, Desert Mountain, McDowell Mountain Ranch, Greyhawk, Stonegate, Scottsdale Mountain Ranch, Scottsdale Ranch, Paradise Valley, all of these communities, as Council Yemel said, have recognized the benefit to their value, to their ability to sell their house, to offer residents and new home buyers the latest and greatest. It's an amenity for your community.